This is podcast number seven, which deals again with hydrostatic forces, but in this case, in this case looks at the magnitude of the hydrostatic force or, and the point of action of that force. Okay, so we're looking at the same diagram again as we did in podcast number six, which is a vertical dam wall that is submerged to its top. The pressure distribution along this wall is equal to rho gy, where y is the distance from the top down uh, to the bottom. And we know that the hydrostatic force, at least we found what the magnitude of the hydrostatic force was in the last podcast. In this podcast, we're going to look at the line of action or the point of action of that force, sometimes defined as the center of pressure. So the line of action is the distance yp from the surface down to that uh, force. And we're going to define y bar as the distance from the surface down to the centroid or halfway down along the uh, vertical wall and that yc is the further distance from that centroid down to the point of action of the force. Therefore, yp is equal to y bar plus yc, where y bar is equal to h over 2. By turning the dam through 90 degrees, we're looking at it now face on, and we can see that it has a height h and a width b. Again, we're going to take moments about a point xx along the surface. And we're going to look at the hydrostatic force, the resultant hydrostatic force, and yp. So the moments about that point are equal to yp times f subscript h, the hydrostatic force. By substituting what we learned from the last podcast, podcast number six, we can see that this is therefore equal to yp times rho g h over two times b times h. Now let's look at the hydrostatic force that acts on a small area, an incremental area. So the incremental moment on this uh, element will equal the force multiplied by its distance y. So the small moment, dmxx, is equal to y times f dy. That's the force on that highlighted red area, which is equal to the y times the pressure times the area, y times rho gy times b dy. We integrate from our limits from y is equal to 0 to y is equal to h, and we find <coughs> that the uh, that this will equal rho g b, the integral from 0 to h of y squared dy. By integrating, we find that it's equal to rho g b y cubed over 3 from limits of 0 to h. And we get our total moment is equal to rho g b h cubed over 3. Now in the sl last slide, we also showed that the moments are equal to y p rho g h over 2 times b times h. So we can let these two equal to each other, and, we'll follow, and we can therefore solve for yp, the point of action of the hydrostatic force. By cancelling across, it simplifies to find that yp is equal to 2h over 3, or effectively the hydrostatic force acts two-thirds the way down along the hydrostatic wall. A general rule to remember for this is that the point of action of the force is equal to ix over a y bar, where yp is the depth of the pressure, of the center of pressure. ix is a second moment of area about an axis to place, displaced from the centroid. And this is a function of the shape. So there's a shape function depending on whether the dam is triangular, circular, rectangular, or square. a is the surface area of the dam. And y bar is a parallel distance from centroid to fluid surface. So in the last two podcasts, podcast six and seven, we've dealt with hydrostatic forces. The first one dealt with the magnitude of the hydrostatic force, and the second one has now dealt with calculating the point of action of that force.